So, hi, Nagi. Hi. Hello, can you hear us okay? Hi. Yeah, we can hear you very well. Alrighty. So, can you tell us a little bit about your case? Yeah, so we have uh, three interesting cases this uh, evening, and we'll start with the first case, uh, which is a patient who's come with fever uh, and jaundice of two weeks duration, suggestive cholangitis. The lab showed evidence of a raised bilirubin, an alkaline phosphatase also, which was twice normal. This patient had a cholecystectomy 15 years back, and since then, elsewhere in some other hospital had multiple sessions of ERCP and CBD clearance, uh, several stent exchanges over 12 years. Uh, last stent was taken out a couple of uh, months back, and then he's been having recurrent cholangitis. Uh, so to investigate him, when we actually looked at his um, MRCP and CT scan, uh, MRCP showed a dilated CBD and CHD with some filling defects, uh, not classic of stones, they were filling defects, and uh, the CBD also was dilated, predominant with the porta, with uh, multiple interductal enhancing lesions in the CHD, CBD, and the cystic duct stump. So diagnosis of a potential tumor was made interductally, and uh, we thought this... Uh, Evening, we'll try and see what is actually inside the bile duct by doing a cholangioscopy. I think Sandeep just gave a talk on this area, and this uh, case will certainly demonstrate how useful cholangioscopy can be. I'm already inside. I'm using an Olympus uh, 180 V-scope, and then our policy when we're doing cholangioscopy, at least for the first time, uh, is to always use a wire-guided cholangioscopy because that makes it much easier so I'm having a clever, clever cut spintotome inside, and I'm, there's a lot of hyperplastic tissue here, so I'm trying to cannulate, because this patient already had previous ERCP, this should be easy. My guide wire is high up now. Raymond, you can see the fluoroscopy? Uh, yes, we got a good view there. Oh. So what I'll do is I'll now remove the spintotome. Again, we don't inject, you don't give any contrast when you're thinking of cholangioscopy, mainly because the view gets a little obscured and you get a like, oily view when you have contrast. So what we plan in this case is to use a cholangioscope directly on this guide wire. And once we are fairly reasonably high up, then we can remove the guide wire and then follow the cholangioscope down. For this particular study, we are using a, a spy cholangioscope, the single-use, uh, single-operator digital cholangioscope. The problem, of course, the views are excellent. The problem is the cost. But hopefully these views, uh, which have sort of, when you look at what happened in the history of evolution of cholangioscopy, you realize that what fantastic views we had. I think, I remember Raymond's, both of us were doing a mother and baby cholangioscope in a workshop together when we saw this worm. Yes, yes. Which we reported in yeah, endoscopy. Do you remember that, Raymond? Exactly. Yeah. Yes, that's an amazing case. We were not expecting the worm there, yeah. but, uh, the, you know, it's the yeah. beauty of the live case. Yeah. So what we are now doing, let's see what comes in here. This, you can see the spike cholangioscope. What we do now is at this stage, I'll ask my assistant, Mr. Srinivas is there with me. Anesthesia is by Dr. Santosh, who's already known to everybody, most people in endoscopy area. I'm going to turn my cholangioscope up a little and then introduce it on this guide wire. What we normally do is get the big wheel up here so that it goes inside and then see that's how you intubate it. So we get it very close to the papilla. Use the big wheel up and then intubate the cholangioscope inside. Now what I'll do is I'll just go up. I'm not going to see any vision at all. I'm going to go right up near the intrahepatic ducts. And then I'm going to fix my cholangioscope, get the picture, big picture. I'm going to get the picture of the cholangioscope and then fix it here so that it becomes a single operator cholangioscope now. And then I'm going to now the tricks are some, there are some tricks when you're using cholangioscope. First of all, when you have the cholangioscope in hand, be careful that you're watching also the endoscopic image, which is in the right corner. The reason is that if you, sometimes it slips off if you don't watch carefully. There are also, in the cholangioscope, there are four knobs, right, left, up and down, just like the endoscope. It's very important to do this, that we, there's a way to fix this knob. This is completely fixing the knob and this is completely releasing the knob. It's very important to put it in mid position. Now in mid position what happens is you can still turn the knobs but they're fixed at that position so it's very steady. There are two ports, one for continuous suction that we have here which is also important because you want uh, 
that all the muck and all should go off and there is also a, a, a water irrigating jet that is there. So you can put water and you can operate this either with the hand or with the pump and we are doing with the pump this uh, afternoon. Suction is very important because if you don't constantly suck out, there is too much of water, cholangitis and also a lot of muck is there. So these are very important. What I will now do is to adjust my cholangioscope so I go to the center of the field and as I am watching, I get to the center of the field, then put some water to see what we have. So I am now using saline, infusing saline, and you can see there is some muck there because we are high high up in the right anterior hepatic duct. So Raymond, can you see the pictures there, cholangioscope picture, you can see the very nice... Uh, yes, yes, beautiful right images here. These are ductal segmental ducts that you are seeing. Yes. So I am now going to come down, as I go come down, at this stage, I will also remove my guide wire because the guide wire is no longer necessary. I am deep inside. To get a better vision, I am going to remove my guide wire. And you can see the nice vision here. Yes. So it's there is nothing up there. The pathology, yes. as far as I can see, yes. I come down and again, I adjust. I come down. Now there is something starting to appear there. No, this is the... I'm just coming down. If you see the air cholangiogram also here, yes. you will see that I'm seeing the intrahepatic ducts, mm. which would, uh, I don't know whether you're getting the air cholangiogram, but we can see the air cholangiogram also fairly nicely here. Mm. Okay, yeah, now you can see. Yes. Now I'm seeing the ducts now nicely, and you can see the air cholangiogram. I'm somewhere in the mid part here. And again, very important to frequently put it so that it's in the center of the field and gradually start pulling it out. And then now I can see that there's some greenish muck there. And this is why I'm coming to the hilar region. You can see that in the air cholangiogram also that we're in the hilar region. And I come back down here. And now we are starting to see some villi type of appearance there. Can you see that? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, here it is. Very tight. Wow. Very tight. Hmm. So these are nice villi that you see here. Yeah. So this is starting right at the hilar region. If you can see the fluoroscopy, you can see that the hilar region is starting. And uh, we are starting to see this very nicely there. Unfortunately, we don't have narrowband imaging or ability to actually magnify this. But I think you are convinced, Raymond? Yes, yes. Are you, are you thinking about uh, IPNB? Yeah. So this, is a, this looks like an intraductal papillary tumor of the bile ducts. There are various classifications. There are two varieties. There is a mucinous type and non-mucinous type. We don't see any mucus at all here. Mm. So this is probably the non-mucinous type. Mm. Uh, when you take pathologies, you can find whether it's pancreatic biliary, gastric or the on oncocytic type. Mm. That will give the prognosis. But what we can clearly say from this picture is that you are dealing with the intraductal papillary neoplasm of the bile ducts. That is the recent WHO classification, IPNB. And uh, these tumors uh, do well with surgery. Mm. The variations of these tumors are papillomatous tumors, villus adenoma, so many other names, but this is very clear now, the recent WHO naming. Uh, if there are a lot of mucus, I would have called it as a mucin secreting tumor, but we don't see much mucus here. Right. I just see this very beautiful villa here. Yes. Can we have the full picture? You can see now I've come down just below the hilum now. So it's continuing below, and it's important to see how far it's extending. Now we, I've come down. And I'm trying to see if I can... Uh, the other important thing is, see, when I'm doing this, my scope is tending to go back a little. So I have to keep adjusting it because all the time you're concentrating on the bile duct, you're not looking at the scope. So now I've straightened it again and I'm coming back. So it's extending right back down. It's coming there. Very nice pictures. Sometimes these are fascinating pictures. You keep watching them and forget what is happening to the other scope, yes. the big scope. So you can see again here a very vascular pattern. Yeah. Yes. So I'm now actually in the mid part. I'm just coming down the junction of the CHD and CBD and still you can see this very long tumor. Raymond? Yes. Is James with you or is he? Yes, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm fascinated. Yes. So James, we didn't hear you, so I was wondering whether you've gone for some surgery. No, I, I was wondering to myself, uh, what, what type of surgery will you be offering him? Yeah, so that's a very good question. I think this patient, if we actually look at the hilum, he's not involved, it's just from below the hilum. So I think we can do a 
Pancreatic or duodenectomy? Yes. So you reset the bowel duct very close to the hilum. Yeah, yeah. Very close to the hilum, so it can go up. Because you see, as I'm coming down, I'm in the CBD now, and I can still see this tumor. So you'll have to really do a pancreatic or duodenectomy and extend very high up into the hilum. So that may be the best thing. If you are going into the left or right intrapanic duct, I'd have thought of adding a segmental hepatectomy or even a transplant at one stage. But this doesn't require that. I think you can very clearly see. So now, this is big, the villi are becoming bigger and very nicely we are seeing it. Beautiful images. Yeah. Very so, nice. Yes. And you can see those nice. vessels also very clearly there. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. So these are, I think this is a classic case. I mean, you can't get a better case than this for, for showing a papillary tumor of the bile duct. And the good thing is the prognosis is much better than the conventional cholangiocarcinomas because most of them are localized. Of course, we would uh, do another assessment in this case, like US and maybe a PET also, before he goes for this uh, radical surgery. You agree, James? Yes. A uh, little, some uh, people. Right. I, I'm just yeah, wondering whether you're going to biopsy this uh, nodules. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we were going to biopsy it. Uh, normally, with such, uh, I mean, dramatic appearance. But the problem, uh, James, is our surgeons don't trust us at all, physicians. They always want proof. So that's okay. reason why. That's the reason why. Well, I can like understand the sentiment. Don't trust me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's a problem for us. So we have to biopsy just to tell them, look, this is... Of course, one of the ways the biopsy sometimes helps us is he'll show us whether this is a pancreatic obliterate type, gastric, or uh, whether it's oncocytic. But you can see this is going right up to the... I'm coming to the lower end of the bile duct and I can see it's going right up. So what I'll now do is I'll take a biopsy just to show you the principles of fibroid biopsy, just one before we go to the next case. Now you can see that uh, very nice villi there. I'm going to use a fibroid, rather costly way. In fact, one of the things we do in a non-workshop situation like this is use this and then take a biopsy with a standard biopsy forceps because anyway you take a biopsy, you'll get a good piece in this case. You don't require to do it with a spy bite because spy bite is going to give you a small bit. This is a spy bite biopsy forceps, four millimeter jaws. They're trying to improve on this. I'm going to use that. Can you open, close? Yeah, I'm going to use this. Uh, there, there is certain principles of using the spy bite and that's why I'm trying to show this now is that when you actually get to the elevator stage, the spy bite doesn't go in because the elevator is blocking it. So what we would do in this case is to pass the whole scope up there as it goes up and then uh, pull it back as you push the spy bite in. So now you can see the spy bite is going in. Mr. Srinivas is helping me with that. As soon as he gets resistance, he's going to tell me that he's got resistance. Then I know that I have to push the spy scope inside. Resistance? Huh? Uh, so that I have to push the spy scope inside now to to go deeper, and then the spy bite is going to come out. Yeah. Okay. This is a very yeah, helpful. Yeah. Now the spy tip, bite actually. has come out. Yes. Yeah. Spy yes. bite has come out now. Yes. So I'm now going to adjust the scope in such a way that I can see the spy bite there. Can you see it now? Yes. Open. Yes. Yeah. So I'll just grab one of these things. And of course, now they have this uh, spy bite max, which um, yeah, 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 yeah. But I think still the the, the size of the biopsy uh, is very small. It's small, yeah, very small. So I think if you have a, if you have the biliary biopsy forceps, that's very good. I think now right. the recent one, which is come flexible one, close, yeah. So this is just to take one bit. So what we'll do now is now that you got the principle of the procedure. I think we should uh, go to the another room where Sandeep would be ready. Okay, uh, thank you. A Very nice demonstration. He's doing something more exciting than this. Thank you. So I think, uh, that, thank, thank you. you. Okay, thanks, Nagi. Mouth this way. Second case is a case of 69 year old male with obstructive jaundice, vomiting, and weight loss for last two months. Uh, in past, he had underwent laparoscopy cholecystectomy seven years ago. Upper GI endoscopy was done which showed a pyloroduodenal narrowing with mucosal infiltration. Ultrasound showed a dilated CBD, IHBRD, dilated pylorus with focal lesions in the liver. 
and FNAC from the liver SOL showed adenine was 8.6, ALT AST was elevated, and alkaline phosphorase was more than 500. CECT uh, on CECT it demonstrated distal bile duct mass lesion infiltrating pylorus and CBD with upstream dilatation with peripotal lymph node, very cholangiocarcinoma, and on MRCP also it showed a dilated CBD structure with mass lesion. Uh, with CBD involvement, dilated CBD, ISBR, and multiple lymph nodes. So, plan is to do a US guided gastroenterostomy. Over to Dr. Sandeep. You are on, sir. Hi, Good Lord. evening, Sandeep. Uh, hi. Hi. Hi, sir. James. Hi. Hi, hi Sandeep. <laughs> so, uh, let me introduce my team before I uh, introduce the case. As you heard, the history with me is uh, Dr. Jahangir, Hi. Dr. Asif, they are my colleagues who will be helping me out in this case, and Dr. Upender God is a senior anesthetist with Dr. Srinivas, who will, be, who will anesthetize the patient. So what we are doing is the uh, US guided gastrojejunostomy using the dedicated E-pass balloon. If you have the fluoroscopy image, to save time, we have passed the E-pass balloon over the guide wire. You can see the markers at the tip. And distal to the markers uh, are two balloons, which we will now fill with the uh, contrast. This EPAS balloon goes over, uh, over the guide wire, but to place it, since it's a very floppy uh, tube, we use an over tube. And that's why I have a short over tube in my hand, if the cameraman can focus it, through which the EPAS balloon has gone across. It's like a, a nasogastric tube, but it's about 250 centimeters long. This tube has two balloons, 20 centimeter apart, and this balloons will be filled with contrast and saline at about 30 to 40 cc. The purpose of these balloons is to anchor the jejunum, and intervening area between the two balloons is then filled with saline, contrast, and a coloring agent. So we'll uh, start the procedure of uh, first inflating the two balloons. So can you, Madhu, you can fill the distal balloon first with contrast please yes front balloon yes so on the fluoroscopy if it's on you can see one of the balloon is getting filled up that's the distal most balloon okay. about five centimeters uh, from the lead balls and uh, Shin, uh, Shinder, you also fill the other balloon so two balloons are getting filled together mm. you can see the contrast getting filled up i'm keeping a gentle tug Okay, inject. Keep, keep, keep filling, keep filling. Ah. So the principle is to occlude a segment of a small bowel, the duodenal flexure area, and fill the intervening area with a lot of saline and contrast, about 150 to 200 cc, to create a pseudocyst-like appearance. And then we puncture from the stomach using EUS. Uh, with a freehand technique to create a gastrojejunostomy or gastroenterostomy. How much is gone? Yeah, 20, 20 cc? 20. 10 more cc, please. Mm -hmm. Saline, saline. This patient also has a biliary obstruction, and since we could not do the ERCP, mm -hmm. so we're planning to do a GJF first. And if time permitting, we'll try to do hepatogastrostomy in the end of the as the last procedure. Okay. okay. So this is 30 cc in the front balloon. Okay. And uh, 20 cc, which is now getting filled. Okay. okay. So once that is done, we will pull back the over tube. So Sandeep, if you take an estimate, so where do you think the uh, the lambs will land on this view? Like, will it be next to the proximal balloon, or where, where do you think it will it will so, anchor? So we will see how it looks like on EUS while we are filling the intervening area. So okay, we we'll close both the things, and now we'll fill this area with the with saline and contrast. First contrast. So the proximal balloon is in third part of duodenum, and the distal balloon is beyond the DJ flexure, I think about 10-15 centimeters beyond. Contrast on that? Oh. Screen.
pure contrast first pure contrast i think all these things take little time but the final procedure of doing the gj is much uh, quicker okay. so what we are seeing here is um the um the area of the target would be very close to the ligament of tri so can you tell us a little bit about that's where right. you think is uh, target that's right it will be very close to ligament tri either the diurnal side or the jejunal side okay so now you can see the contrast filling up up keep noting how much you are filling up yeah okay now you keep filling i'll put the scope in thoda aage aao aur contrast karo ha kuch dikha so now i am passing the eu scope beside this e pass tube Air out, no CO2. Gospel. Something on low level. Ah, okay. No, nah. yeah, thanks. So I can see one of the balloons here. This is one of the flora, please, flora. So that is looking at the proximal balloon. Keep pulling, keep pulling. हाँ मेथिल में डालोगे। अब मेथिल में डोपे। Keep noting how much. One fifty cc के लिए। हाँ। So while he is filling up, I'll keep interrogating the area to look at the which is the most. Okay, so this looks to be a good site. Okay. This is a jejunal loop. If it comes, this gets filled up. Let me see if the tube is visible inside that. Not so clear, but anyway. maybe the tube is here this is a tube right. it's casting a shadow below so this say this loop will get filled up it's a fairly long loop actually so about 60 cc has gone we have to fill at least 150 distended well so it looks like a pseudo cyst looks yeah like okay distended bowel loops there that's good that's good Right, right, right. And the coloring agent that we use is uh, methylene blue. Yes, sir. Okay. So the purpose of this coloring agent is when we do a gastroenterostomy, that color will come in the stomach, which will tell us that the our target structure has been correctly punctured. Yeah, now we can see clearly that. Uh, yeah, this this loop looks very nice. Yes. Nice. It's getting distended well, and we can come from this side. Usually, the puncture site or the lamps deployment site comes around the DJ flexor or the fourth part of the duodenum most of the time. So here also it looks like the same, approximately in the DJ flexor area. Stent open, please. वेट करके रख लें कितना हो गया 140 140 हो गया ओके जो लिटिल मोर लिटिल मोर सो अबाउट 140 सीसी हैज बीन फिल्ड इन द इंटरवीनिंग सेगमेंट लुक्स नाइस आई थिंक सम मोर वी हैव दिस अ नाइस एरिया वी हैव अ गुड लेंथ स्ट्रेट लेंथ अवेलेबल हां इन काइंड लेट मी लुक अराउंड मोर Okay. Any other? This is different. This one yeah, looks this good. This one looks very nice. Okay, that's yeah. fine. How much? Little more. Little more. Yeah. Finish it off. One seventy. One seventy cc. Okay. So one seventy. This is a very nice loop we have. Yeah. This is perfect. Yeah. You should finish. Dal the dal the. Looks like an ideally distended jejunal loop. Yeah. So can we have the stent now? So, using an axio stent, hot axios okay. of 20 mil, 20 mm caliber. Okay. Wet, just wet the entire sheet. So the external sheet has hydrophilic coating, so it is better to make it wet so that it passes easily. Okay. 
ओके वन स्मॉल वेसल देर बट दैट्स ओके या always uh, better to select a jejunal loop which has sufficient length in a longitudinal fashion so that it will allow the uh, okay. delivery system ready ah okay now we are ready with the hot axios uh, raymond can you see the the stand? tip of the stand yes yes that's the tip of the stand yes. there's a little bit of peristalsis happening yeah okay let's let me the settings we used is auto cut 100 watts and effect 4 it's a pure cut so dr sandeep is trying to puncture the jejunal loop उसको दे रहा थैंक यू सो आई एम जस्ट ट्राइंग टू पैरालाइज डॉक्टर पिंदर गॉड एज एग्री टू गिव लिटल बट ऑफ उसको पैन आई एम जस्ट वेटिंग फॉर दैट विंडो अपॉर्चुनिटी व्हेन आई हैव द बेस्ट डिस्टेंशन विद नॉट मच ऑफ पेरिस्टाइलिस दिस लुक्स ओके पैट देखो some connection issue it didn't burn i tried my first go connection is okay okay it's fine that okay. sound came na just give me a moment i think this is the most crucial step Yeah. Okay. Very so nice. I'm in Very now. Nice. Yes. Yes. Ah, it's going to come. Yes. So now we are removing the pottery. So once we are in, little more. Okay. Yeah, you can appreciate that the delivery system of the stent is well inside the jejunal loop. So that's the tip somewhere here. Yes. That's the tip. I'll now remove the. Now we are moving to second step of the stent deployment. and we are releasing the proximal flange now okay the inner flange okay it's opening yes. okay you can see yes yes here it comes okay. so it is very well approximated it's with the jejunal close. wall and we'll uh, get the endoscopy view now okay. if you can see the the black mark I think it was visible. Yeah, and got a glimpse of it. I think we have a glimpse of uh, the black black mark, mark okay. here on endoscopic vision. Okay. Now we are deploying the. You can see the black mark now. Right. So I'll deploy the proximal flange, which is now got deployed. And now push the delivery system. Yes. Very nice. Yeah. So nice data. I'm just looking for the yeah. blue color. Yeah, here comes the blue color. Nice. And that's uh, This is the most uh, rewarding moment seeing the fluid coming out here. <laughs> yeah, both the color. The blue fluid. color is uh, so reassuring. Yeah. That your pulse rate now starts to come down otherwise we have always tachycardia that are in the right position. Yes. No, just you can appreciate we... on floor wall. The 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 loop has now decompressed. The contrast has gone. So what we'll do now is uh, deflate both the balloons slowly and uh, and remove the e pass balloon. Okay. We are not trying to dilate this axial stent. We'll let it expand gradually, which will happen next 24 to 48 hours to its full diameter of two centimeters. uh we can actually go to the next room before you go that i let me tell you that this patient also has a biliary obstruction which needs drainage 
So we'll continue the process and uh, when you come back from the next room, if you have the everything ready, we'll show you the final position of the stand. Okay. Yeah. Sounds okay. good. Okay. Sounds good. So thank you, Okay, Sandeep. okay. Well, thank you, Ati. So we are now, can you have the floor now? Yes. Okay. So we are now deflating. Yes. We are slowly deflating both the balloons. Can you have the minimize the picture, please? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. So you can see the balloon getting uh, getting smaller in caliber. Yes. And that's important. If you if you pull back the inflated balloon, it will hit the inner end of the stent and yeah. can puncture. It can cause malposition of the stent or migration of the stent, which you don't want to happen. Right. So there's no hurry in doing any of those things. Right. So while they are doing it, I let me examine the the Bellary system. Right. As you can see it here, mm. the bile ducts are quite dilated. Oh yeah. You have the US image there which can show you yes. that this is the biliary system is quite dilated. Yes. Some good targets for your HGS here. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's right. Has the balloon got deflated, the two balloons? Okay, okay. So I am looking at segment three, yeah. and the the one on the right is segment two, which is closer to the to the top of diaphragm, right. or the left lobe top. So this is segment two. This is segment three. My target is this one. Okay. I'll use a Doppler to confirm that this is not a vessel. Yes. It is a duct only, which is fairly nicely dilated. Right. And since we know from MRCP that this is a type one stricture. Okay. This should be fairly okay. Let me just measure the duct diameter so that I can choose my stent. Right. It should match my the caliber of the stent. So this is 8.2, the left hepatic duct, segment 3. Right. So I think I'll, 10 mm should be okay. Yeah, yeah, so be. There sh it should not be mismatch. If it's too bigger than the duct, mm -hmm. it will cause trauma to the pancreas and can cause leak. Yes. And reverse, if it happens, then again leak would happen. Right. Yes. So on fluoro, you can appreciate that both the balloons okay. are deflated. So now we can pull it out. Now we are pulling out the EPAS balloon. Fluoro, fluoro, fluoro. Okay, yeah. Under the fluoro. Yes. 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 Now we can remove everything, both EPAS, overtube. That's the final position of the strength of the axios between stomach and the jejunum. Looking good there. Yeah, so far so good. Yeah. That's a big node here, you see oh, that? Yeah. Wow, it's a malignant yes. already put in. Yes. Let's come back to the left hepatic duct. Yes. The patient is in a prone position, so both procedures are done in the prone position. Can you have the fluoro now? So, and if you can minimize the screen so that I can look at the tip of my endoscope, which will tell me which way my scope tip is looking at. Sorry. Yeah, so that's fine. Yes. Before puncturing, two things are important on fluoro. One is we should be below the, in the stomach, below the G junction. The other one is uh, the tip of the scope. Okay. There's a hepatic so, vein which is very close to it. Yes. So I don't want to puncture the hepatic vein. Right. Screen, please. Ah, this, is this is better. This is this is better. This looks better. Yeah. 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 Can I have the needle now? So, yeah. So this is a very good position. Gangir helped me in finding it out. You agree, Asif? Yes, sir. Okay. So it's very important to be on the same page in the room. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's, uh, so I I'll use, uh, it's uh, good that you I'll demonstrate that, uh, uh, balancing the different views because you, you now you get all the views uh, balanced. You have a good scope position, you're pointing to the hilum, um, and you're not too close to your heart, so uh, too close to your diaphragm, so looking looking good on all the screens. So. Yeah. So I'm using a hook needle, 19 gauge which is uh, the stylet has been removed and it's primed with contrast and saline.
this is the standard fna needle 90 ng needle okay i lost my view yeah. but I'll, i'll find it again this yes. is it okay. so once the needle comes in scope becomes a little stiff uh-huh. the spine yes. of the need of the scope becomes yeah. a little stiff a screen please yes. floro yeah. yeah now you can see the scope also pointing towards the hilum yeah. liver hilum yeah. looks like an doppler Let's take a little uh, bezel. We can avoid that. I think it was. Uh, it's a small vessel. Uh, let's see, Jangir, if I can. Yeah, yeah. Avoid it. It's best. But otherwise, sometimes it may be. It will get compressed by the scope. Ah. Yeah. That's comfortable. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Now you Very can nice. see that needle tip. Yeah. yeah. can we have the madhu can you come please so after the puncture okay so very nice we inject small amount of contrast you can see the okay guide wire please let the saline to be pushed and then pass the guide wire okay. so what okay. kind of guide wire are you going to use i'm using a teremo angle teremo okay uh remen Yes. Uh, the other room is ready. Okay. We'll keep continuing with the picture, and we'll come back as soon uh, as they finish. Okay. 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 Thank okay. you, Sandeep. Thank you, Raymond. Right, Thanks, James. Good work. Third, third case is a 70-year-old male with intermittent dysphagia, regurgitation, and dry cough since six months. Uh, labs were essentially normal. Chest X-ray showed prominent bronchovascular markings. Changes were suggestive of recurrent aspiration. So a, a barium study showed up out pouching in the upper esophagus. Very atypical type. Upper GI endoscopy is showing a diverticulum in upper esophagus. Plan is to perform Zenker's diverticulotomy. Over yeah. to Dr. Reddy. Hi. Again we have the same team here Dr. Santosh Dr. Harnath and Mr. Srinivas. This is a patient for Zenker's uh, diverticulectomy. I know that you're going to do a Z poem in this or I don't know whether it's already done Raymond. Already a Z Z poem has been demonstrated. Uh Well, uh, this morning Philip did one, but uh, it's nice to see another yeah. one. So, what we're going to show is a more traditional approach. Philip is a very talented endoscopist, so I cannot match him and do a Z poem. Very difficult. So, I'll do a more traditional method of how we deal with this. And for the less uh, talented endoscopist, this is an easier method to do. What I'm going to do is use a new type of endoscopy system. I thought I'll demonstrate. this this is the evs xi system from olympus yes. you also have this i think raymond uh, james yes yeah uh, we we were XI, starting yeah. to have this so yes yeah so now this xi system has got certain facilities of which first is that there is a facility that you can go into the red dichromatic index if you go into the red dichromatic image it's actually the amber light that comes in and uh, this is the one you can see the light which comes in is the amber light it's a is better no? it's it's a, so what happens is amber light is absorbed by the blood vessels and when there's there's a bleed hopefully if it doesn't happen here it's okay if it happens we can use this to see it very clearly to catch the bleeding point right. so red dichromatic index rdi is one right. okay now the, other than this we have one more mode in this and that is uh, the txi the txi mode is uh, the texture color index which uh, image which gives it a much better texture so the tsi mode will give us a very sharp image when you put it on like this and then you can so it's more of a sharpness of the image plus we can go to the near zoom focus also which is there which i'm going very close and then i can do the focus these are the three additional facilities that you have with this other than uh, the standard scope of course you have the nbi and white light So I'm going to use this for this patient, and then the bleed we can use uh, the RDI. The patient is in left lateral, and what I like you to see the camera may not show this very well, but we already have a special tube in the patient is intubated, but we have what is called the diverticuloscope, which is available from Wilson Cook. Who Wilson Cook actually made by Jack Davey and his group, which has got a slit inside. Okay. So what we would do is to put the diverticuloscope. first on the endoscope and fix the diverticulum then the procedure becomes very easy so we already done that and i am now going to pass my scope through the diverticuloscope so that i can go in 
And uh, so I'm actually intubating the diverticular scope. I go inside, and uh, you, when you come to the diverticulum, you can see it nicely there, okay? Oh, wow. It's straight, stretched out, very nice, yeah, making the procedure, as I said, yeah. for uh, somebody like me, it makes it much more easier. I'm going to use a TT knife to cut through the diverticulum. Now, I like to use the TT knife. We, we, actually, we reported this, that there are a variety of things you can use. You can use uh, the spintratome, the Siemens spintratome. You can use those cutting devices. Again, we reported on this. But in my opinion, this is the best knife, the TT knife. What we use for POEM, the same one. Okay. I use uh, 2 2 2, F2 interval 2, cutting uh, 2 in these cases. And, and, uh, when I cut to the, this is the bottom of the, the septum, and I come to the bottom, I'll put a, a stent inside. I mean, I'll put some clips to actually close the opening. Now, can you have the TT knife out? So I'll just, uh, you have to, i just come back a little, come back a little, okay? Out, out, so this is out. So the mucosal cut is made first. And you can see because of those plastic wings there, it protects against mucosal injury on either side, okay? We can, we can actually put some water in to, yeah. see? Yeah. So it's very controlled. Eh? Right. It's very stable. Yeah, very stable with it. Do you need to use a cap with? or no cap? No, no need of a cap. When we use the diverticular scope, we don't use a cap because it's not necessary now. If you don't use the diverticuloscope, we use the cap. And you can see the nice muscular layer. And again, this is the quality of the scope here. So you can see now we're coming to the end of the muscle there, right? right. right. Very faint mus muscular layer, you see, okay. Then we can cut a little more here. If there's a bleed, actually, I can even use a spray quag on this TT knife, and that's one of the advantages we found, that we can use the spray quag. Just one more bit. Okay. Uh, I was hoping there's a bleed so you can see the RDI, but unfortunately, no. So a little more of the muzzle, which I'm going to cut. Okay. So Raymond, you're happy with this? Yes, yeah, looking good. No, the appearance of the ridge like looks very vascular, but like we're surprised that there's yeah. actually no bleeding at all. So, yeah, there's absolutely nice no appearance. bleeding. Yeah. So the procedure is now. I'm going to put an instinct clip to complete the procedure. The instinct clip does two things. It closes this opening. Any small leak to the media sternum is not a problem. And the second thing is that. Uh, what it does is that it increases the area of necrosis so that when it falls off, you'll find a much bigger opening than what you actually did. Okay. So this is the final part of the procedure. Open. No, turn. Open. Yeah, turn. We're going to turn it so that, no. So we have to get to the right position. Close, 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 no. Yeah, that's on one side we can open. So I'm not too happy about this position, so I want to. If we're not opening, we can close it and put another clip on the side. Close, open, okay, okay. Yeah, that's okay, that's good. Okay, so that finishes the procedure, yes. and I think it's, it's come out well. Yes. Wow. Okay, yes. so then I just withdraw. And then this patient is kept overnight and sent off tomorrow morning. Wow. So it's a very efficient. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So it oh, makes it very simple. And uh, I think this is an easy procedure to do, provided you use the right tools, right. I think. Oh. Thank you very much. I, yeah, I hope Sandeep Excellent. must be. Thank you. Thank you, James. I think Sandeep must be. He's, uh, he's doing so. a hepatic uh, gastrostomy. Okay. We'll yeah. go back to Sandeep. Thank you, James. Welcome back. Raymond, can yes. you have the do you have the fluoroscopy and the US image? Yep, got both. So got what both we did use. was uh, we passed a guide wire into the CBD. Okay. Created a 
fistula yes. using a cystotome over the guide wire. Yes. The guide wire is deep inside the lower CBD as you can see on the fluoroscopy image. And I'm now passing a geo board stent okay. over the acrobat wire. Right. A very nice uh, stable wire okay. configuration, yeah. That's right. That's most important actually. My stent has gone in yeah. and uh, it's a, a 3 is to 7. The, the distal 3 centimeters is uncovered okay. and the proximal 7 centimeters unco is uh, fully covered. So I'll now start deploying okay. and gently pull it back as well. Okay. Open the release. What's the Open. Open. Are you okay? Floro? Okay. Keep deploying, keep deploying. So I see that mark is stable there. Yes. That's right. And the mark between the uncovered and the covered portion, I'm keeping it very stable. I don't want to move that where the arrow is on the screen at the moment. Yes. It's now crossing that part. Okay. I want to leave a long segment of the stent in the stomach. Yes. So, yeah, we That's do okay. the same too. But now this is good. We'll switch to the endoscopy mode. Okay. Are you going to deploy in the channel or what's your plan? Yes, I want to see it endoscopically myself. And uh, so that's okay. Now you deploy. Release, release. I'm pulling back my scope. I like to see things under vision as well. Okay. Unless. Uh, uh, release, 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 release. Yeah. So part of the stent will be in the channel, yes. but that's okay. Yes. It's long segment, but this will shorten very soon. Yes. Yeah, that's it. Yes, beautiful. Huh? Yes. Pull, pull the wire. Yes. Right pull. Wire pull. Stent down. Open. 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 Yeah, that's fine. Not long. <laughs> pull, pull, pull. Okay, my position is fine, and that's why I'm pulling back the wire now. Okay. So we release sufficient length of the stent in the stomach okay. to have a safety uh, margin. Right. And you can see now it is completely came out of the scope channel. Yes. So round about, yeah, that's fine. Pull back the. You can see the bio coming out also. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Push, push, push. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my final position. Okay. I'll just. Uh... And then you get a good length okay, of the so stent in the stomach. Really long, yes. So this is a long segment in the stomach, but this will shorten over next two to three days. Yes. And if you do an endoscopy, this stent will be only two to three centimeters outside the stomach wall. Right. And this is a perfect position. And if you have the fluoroscopy, I think that looks very nice. Yes, They're beautifully done. So you make it so easy, but uh, you did a lot of uh, good technique there. So uh, very beautiful demonstration. Uh, that, that's mainly because of the team that we have here. Dr. Jahangir, Asif, perfect sedation, and the technician, and the environment itself is, is, uh, keeps us relaxed. There's no palpitations, no heartbeat running fast. Yeah. So I think uh, we come to the end of the session. Okay, thank Raymonds you. and uh, James, thank yeah. you very much uh, yes, thank you. for giving us this Wonderful. opportunity. I think hopefully we could demonstrate some good procedures. Yes, so great demonstrations from AIG. So thank you, Team AIG. Thank, so, thank you very thank much. You. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank 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 you. Thank